Good morning sports fans, welcome to the channel. My name is Saad Shah and today we're going to look at some more quick tips for Fusion to make your workflow faster. Let's get into it. Tip number eight, how to disable the view of a node. That's like hiding a layer. So in this composition we have some noise on the bottom and then we have a tiny particle system on top of that, a large particle system which is this round particles, and then we have some um, color work going on in the post. So let's say if you wanted to turn off this whole stack of uh, nodes, you would hit Control P on the merge, and that will take care of turning off all those nodes. You can also go to the inspector right here on the right, and in the node content header, you have on and off switches for the visibility. You can use that as well. Tip number nine, quick attach on create. Let's look at this simple composition. You have a background, you have a media output node, and let's say you want to create a small square in the middle. So normally what you would do is you would take a background node and then you would take a rectangular mask and you would connect the output to this blue input knot and that would create that. Then you would create a merge node, hook up your little box to the merge, foreground, you take the background and pipe it into the merge, and then you would pipe this into the output. And then here's your little box. Now, when you're working with nodes, you can create uh, the connections as you're creating the nodes. You don't have to do it the way I just showed you, which would be the, the slower version. So let me do it one more time with the quick attach method. First of all, we're going to make a background. And then to create the merge, we're simply going to connect the output to the output of the uh, background that you had. And then when you're creating a mask for the, the foreground image, just click on it, click on the node that you want to connect it to, and you'll see this orange outline, and that'll tell you that that node is selected right now. You can add your rectangular mask, and that will automatically connect because it already knows which input to go into. Tip number 10, you can enable or disable the navigator right here on the right side uh, with the V key on your keyboard. You can turn it off, you can turn it on, you can also make it larger or smaller. This is useful when you're working in a very large composition. Uh, I personally like to keep it off because you can simply zoom out and zoom in very quickly uh, without needing it. To change your default settings for the navigator, you can go to Fusion, the preferences, and go to Flow. And here you can see if you want to keep the navigator always off, always on, or on auto. Auto would mean that if you are zoomed in on your project, then the navigator will pop up uh, so you can pan inside your flow. Tip number 11, to swap inputs on a node, hit Control T. Now in this simple example, we have a blue rectangle and a green rectangle. The blue rectangle is connected to the yellow input knot, which means it's the background. So the green would be on the foreground. If you were to move the green on top of the blue, it would obscure the blue because it is on top. If you wanted to reverse this operation, click on the merge and hit Control T. This will put the blue box on top and the green rectangular box on the bottom. So if you were to move the blue now, it would be on top. Speaking of input knots, the yellow is the input knot for the background. The green is the input knot for the foreground. This gray box is the output. This is what would connect to the next node. And the blue uh, triangular input knot here is for a mask. Tip number 12, show inputs. Now let's take the last example we had, disconnect the, the merge. If you wanted to connect this to the background, it will automatically do so. So all you have to do is just bring your pipe over and it'll automatically connect to the yellow input. If you wanted to reveal how many inputs this merge node has, what you could do is take the output and hold down Alt and then let the pipe go. This will show you which input you're connecting to. So in this case, this would be the background. 
The other way to do it is right click on your pipe and let it go. And this will also give you the option to choose which input you want to go to. Tip number 13, Control K turns on and off the view controls for any nodes that you have active. So for instance, let's click on this mask that's masking the uh, green rectangle. This red arrow system and the green outline and this round dotted out outline, these are helpers to help you manipulate the mask. So for instance, you can make it bigger, smaller, you can change the rotation as well as the position of your, your mask. Now, in order to disable viewing this, you can go to these three dots and click on show controls. This will turn off your controls. If you're looking at an artwork that you don't want to see controls over, you can turn it on and off like that. You can also click on control K and that will also turn it off. Tip number 14, use macros to save time. If you aren't using macro presets to automate repetitive tasks, you're wasting your time. Macros are your friend. Macros are most useful when you're reusing design elements or motion graphics in your productions. For instance, the keystroke reveal graphic in this very video is a great candidate to turn into a macro. To create a macro, simply select all your nodes, except for the media out node, and Click on Macro. In the Macro, I can tell Fusion which items I want to be able to change. So for instance, Keystroke, Style Text is something that I'm going to change all the time. And then Close, Save Changes. Let's call it Keystroke. And Save. Let's restart. To use the macro, I'm going to go back to the edit page where my uh, screen capture video is, and I'm going to take a fusion composition wherever I want that keystroke to be. Go into fusion, shift five, and then I can create, I can just insert tool, macro, and keystroke. So now I have that. I can change the text. For example, let's type keystroke in this case. And then when you go back to the edit page, this will work. And that'll be it for today. I hope you picked up some new tricks to make your workflow faster in Fusion. Happy compositing, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.